Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Weekend at Bakugos. This will be Part 13, Chapter 14. It didn't take them long to walk back, and Bakugo steered them towards the staff dorms. Are we going to see Mr. Zawa and Eri? They might be there, but they're letting us use the kitchen, he explained. What for? Izuku asked. There was a wheedling to his voice that suggested he knew that there was something going on. Cooking. I'm telling you, squad, kiddo. Cooking what? Food. Food for what? Eating. Izuku pursed his lips and Bakugo grinned to himself as he pushed the handle with his elbow. He absolutely did not jump when it was pulled sharply away from him. Aizawa was standing in the doorway, frowning at them both. You could have just knocked, he grumbled, stepping aside to let them in. Bakugo simply looked down to show how that wouldn't have been possible, what with the shopping bags in one hand and Izuku holding the other. Izuku waved at Aizawa but stayed quiet for once. Oh what, now you go shy? Good point, their teacher conceded. He gave Izuku a little wave back when they walked past him. Bakugo and Izuku headed for the kitchen, and he dumped the bag on the counter. I mean, next time, if you want, sir, I can just headbutt the door. Bakugo said, keeping his face completely straight. Aizawa narrowed his eyes, and if his mouth hadn't twitched minutely before he opened it to retort, Bakugo would have regretted his response immediately. Who's headbutting doors? President Mike squawked as he came in from the direction of the dorms with Harry on his back. Aizawa actually let out a small snort. No one, Zashi. Bakugo here thinks he's a comedian. You too? Mike smiled widely at Bakugo. You know... I've had to put up with his jokes for years. He jerked his thumb at Aizawa. It'll be great to hear some new material. He practically howled with laughter when Aizawa plucked Eri off his back, scooped up Izuku and stalked off to the sofas with them both, grumbling all the while. Bakugo thought he caught the words betrayal and underappreciated. They watched the three of them settle into the chairs and switch the television on, then Mike clapped a hand to Bakugo's shoulder. So, what are you making? Huh? Oh. Katsudan, Bakugo mumbled as he turned to unpack the shopping bag. Ooh, fancy. Need a hand? Mike asked genially, wiggling his fingers as if he were itching to be involved. Bakugo shrugged. Uh, sure, if you want to, sir. Mike grinned at him. Kid, it's a Sunday. You ain't got to call me, sir. Call me Mike. He nodded. Like, fuck, that is going to happen. Let's be honest, now I'm just going to avoid calling you anything. Mike gave him a thumbs up, then rubbed his hands together. Right. What do you want me to do first, chef? Bakugo have to laugh at that. There are some veggies to go in the sauce that'll need chopping, or I need three dishes setting up, one for the eggs, one for the flour, one for the panko, so I can breadcrumb the meat, he explained quickly. Then a thought struck him. I need to let everyone know we're back, and I need to double-check on... the guest of honor. You go do that, and I'll start on the veggies. If you're not back when I've finished, I'll prep the dishes for breadcrumbing. Mike shooed him out of the kitchen and rummaged through the cupboards for a knife and a chopping board. Bakugo slipped back through the door to the grounds. Stood in the fresh air, he opened the group chat on Izuku's phone, skim reading the progress reports coming in from the class before letting everyone know that they were back and that someone needed to come and pick up the food coloring. He got a response back from Ida. The party shall commence at 1 p.m. sharp. He sent a quick message back to say that that was great, and then he did something he'd never done before. He texted All Might. It was so much more anxiety-inducing than texting Aizawa. His hands were slick already in the time it took him to find the number in Izuku's phone and type. Hi, it's Bakugo. The party's starting at 1 p.m. Is 1.45 okay for you? Bakugo could see that All Might had started typing almost immediately. Then he had stopped. Then he started again. Not helping the fucking nerves, All Might. Thank you for using the All Might Hero Appearance Booking Service. Your appointment has been scheduled for 1.45 p.m. All of our teachers are dorks. Each and every fucking one of them. Before he could reply, however, another message followed. 145 suits me, my boy. I'll do my best to stay for an hour at least. Bakugo shook his head slightly before starting to type, but was interrupted again. I'm very proud of you for putting all this together, young Bakugo, and incredibly grateful that you asked me to be a part of it. The end of his nose started to tingle, and a lump had formed in his throat. He did not forward that message on to himself. No way. Absolutely not. No one can prove shit. Like I said yesterday, anything you can manage will be more than enough. And there's no way I couldn't ask. 
I think Izuku might have actually killed me. I just wanted something good to come out of this. Good answer. I'll see you both later. I can't wait to see his face. Bakugo barked a laugh as he imagined All Might and the big yellow suit from their first year, just bouncing with excitement. Me too. Tokiyami popped across to pick up the food coloring early on, but he had been delayed leaving because, with record speed, Dark Shadow got pulled into a game of hide-and-seek with Izuku and Eri. It culminated in a plant getting knocked over, spilling dirt everywhere, the three of them begging for forgiveness from Aizawa and Tokiyami, who were standing in matching poses, arms folded, like the most emo parenting duo ever. Back in the kitchen, he and Mike had done the prep, the sauce was simmering away, and the rice cooker was doing its own heavy lifting. So, they'd created a small breadcrumb conveyor belt. With them both wearing disposable gloves, Mike would add the slice of support cutlet to the flour, then drop it into the egg with his left hand, then move it from there to the panko with his right. Bakugo would take the meat from the panko dish and submerge the slices in hot oil until cooked through. Cooked slices were deposited onto paper towels to drain excess oil before being heaped into a large dish with a lid to prevent it from getting too cold. As the last slices are frying, Mike, Aizawa, and Eri ready themselves to leave, much to Izuku's disappointment. Bakugo sits him on the counter a little ways away from the oil, but close enough to keep an eye on. It's still early he says to his teachers. Yeah, we need to go and meet... Whatever Mike is going to say gets cut off by Aizawa slapping a hand over his mouth. I trust you won't be late, Aizawa drawled to Bakugo, as if Mike hadn't even spoken, and he wasn't currently holding his husband hostage in their own kitchen. Bakugo just shook his head. Can you send two of the class across before one to help me with the dishes? Aizawa mumbles in agreement, and the three of them troop out the door. Kaminari and Saro arrive about 30 minutes before the party was due to start. Don's face, Izuku yelled, swiveling around on the counter. Bakugo busies himself affixing lids to dishes of sauce, rice, and meat. Saro guffawed as Kaminari groaned and his shoulders slumped. Izuku's face faltered at Kaminari's reaction. Did I say something wrong? It's okay, matey, that's just what Bakugo calls him, Saro explained. His proper name is Kaminari, you haven't really been introduced yet, huh? Oh, Izuku made grabby hands at them until they came forward and held his arms up to Kaminari. He frowned uncertainly, but the toddler is hard to refuse, and so he picked up Izuku. I'm sorry, Kam- Kaminari. It's all right, mini bro. I'm used to it, really, Kaminari said with a wink. Izuku smiled and then asked to be put down before leading around into the kitchen proper. Kachan, you should call people by their names. Like you do, you mean? Bakugo grumbled, but didn't turn around. Kachan! He can hear the chiding whine in Izuku's voice, and it would be infuriating if it wasn't so goddamn endearing. He sighed and glanced over his shoulder before turning around completely. Izuku was staring at him, face scrunched up in a determined disapproval. Bakugo crossed his arms with one eyebrow raised. Izuku's nose wrinkled even further. Who am I kidding? I ain't gonna win. Ch fine. Kaminari, you get the rice. He pointed to the biggest dish on the far right of the three. Saro, you get the sauce. He indicated the dish in the middle. They both wore matching, shit-eating grins as they did as they were told, and Bakugo glared at them as hard as possible. Not a goddamn word, he hissed through his teeth, his voice thick with the promise of fiery death, or at least fiery minor injuries. Wouldn't dream of it, Saro sing-songed as the two of them made for the door again. Kaminari stopped to let Saro through first. Yeah! Wouldn't dream of it, Kachan. And they ran, howling with laughter. Bakugo snarled and launched himself out of the kitchen after them, his palms popping and sparking menacingly. But Izuku beat him to the door, crackling with green, and Bakugo had to skid to a halt or risk knocking him over. The look of disapproval was back. Bakugo dropped his hands and spread them, palms up and no longer ignited. What? he asked, with feigned innocence. It didn't suit him. Why are you so angry at them? Izuku pouted at him. We really gonna go there now? Dun- Kaminari said something he shouldn't have. Izuku frowned, then mumbled curiously. But- But he only called you Kachan. Exactly, Bakugo grunted before spinning on his heel to pick up the meat dish. When he turned back, Izuku's whole demeanor had changed completely. The little boy was still standing in the doorway, but the lightning had gone leaving him looking even smaller. His head was down, hands clasped tight, 
Bakugo gently set the dish back down. What the? Hey, he whispered from by the counter. Izuku didn't look up, and, to Bakugo's immense confusion and discomfort, he heard the smallest of sniffles. He covered the distance between them in a heartbeat and dropped to his knees in front of Izuku. Hey, he tried again as softly as he could manage. What's up, huh? Izuku finally looked up through his curls, and Bakugo's chest clenched at the sight of unshed tears. D do you not l like it? Izuku's voice trembled. Not like what? His hand moved to pull Izuku in, as was becoming so natural, but all of a sudden he was unsure if his touch would be welcome. His inside squirmed uncomfortably as he let his hand fall to his knees instead, empty. Izuku's breath hitched, and the tears began to fall in earnest as he asked, being called Kachan. Bakugo's eyes went wide. Oh. Oh, Izuku. Of course I do. He breathed without hesitation, and he was struck by the sheer truth of that simple statement. B but you c got so angry, Izuku stuttered through his sobs, rubbing at his wet cheeks with the backs of his hands. Bakugo shuffled forward on his knees to lower Izuku's hands. At Kaminari he explained gently, as he wiped away the remaining tears. But, but... I should have said this fucking forever ago. He took a deep breath. I got mad, because it's your nickname for me, and Kaminari knows that. Izuku looked surprised. Then he whispered, Just mine? Bakugo smiled and held out his hands, palms up again, and beckoned Izuku to him. Small, soft hands were placed in his, and Bakugo squeezed gently as he held Izuku's gaze. Izuku, if you remember any of this weekend afterwards, remember this, please, because I don't know when I'll be brave enough to say it again. Just yours. He tried to convey so much with those two small words. The nickname, me, just yours. Izuku finally smiled back, and in his wide green eyes, Bakugo thought he saw something older, a certain softness that would be beyond a four-year-old. I hope you got all that, nerd. Izuku tipped forward and pulled him into a hug. Bakugo stood up, lifting Izuku with him. He picked up the cutlets again and headed for the door. He can be a little late for his own party. The extras can fucking fight me. Izuku sniffed once more, before resting his head on Bakugo's shoulder and muttering, Silly dunce face. Bakugo couldn't help but laugh out loud. Kirishima was waiting outside for them, and excitement radiated from him like an overgrown puppy. He took the dish from Bakugo with one hand and ruffled Izuku's hair with the other. Give us two minutes, then come in, was all he said before slipping back inside. The blinds on all the windows and doors had been drawn so that the common room could remain a mystery. Bakugo began to count. Kachan, Izuku whispered. What's going on? You'll find out in about sixty seconds, he whispered back. But that's ages. Forty-five. But Kachan! Thirty. Count down with me. Izuku sighed dramatically. Okie dokie. They got to ten seconds. Close your eyes, kiddo. Izuku did as he was told, smiling brightly and nearly vibrating. Bakugo put his hand on the handle. Five, they counted. Four, he pushed the handle down. Three, two, he pulled the door wide open. One, they stepped through. Surprise! Bakugo winced at the noise level, and Izuku was so surprised that he nearly escaped Bakugo's hold. Then he shrieked, We're having a party! Yep, Bakugo replied, unable to fight off his smile in the face of Izuku's astonishment. Who for? he asked, genuinely clueless. It's for you, little man, shouted Kirishima. Confusion colored Izuku's face as he looked at Bakugo again. B but it's not my birthday. H how come? Before Bakugo could reply, a calm, measured voice answered first. Because you're just that special, son. Bakugo froze, but Izuku spun in his arms. Uncle! And sure enough, Bakugo Masaru was standing in the doorway that led to the dorms, looking as comfortable as if he were in his own home. What the fuck is happening? Then two more people followed Masaru into the room. Mom? Izuku and Bakugo yelled together. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 14 of Weekend at Bakugos. Chapter 15 will be up next. I hope you all are still enjoying. And as always, thank you so much for listening.